And today we're going to discover your it factor. But before I get started, I'm going to tell you a little story about this quote I came up with a few years ago. How you perceive yourself is far different than how you're perceived. This story is your story. But let me give you an example. So I was on USC's campus a few years ago, and one of my students said, hey, I want you to meet with another professor to, to be a guest lecturer in his class. And I said, sure, set it up. A couple of days later, I get a call, and he says, hey, Professor so-and-so is going to meet you at the Starbucks on campus. I said, great. I said, what does he look like? Oh, don't worry about that, he said. I told him what you look like. And I said, what do you mean you told him what I look like? He goes, yeah, I told him you look like Moby. I said, Moby? You told him I look like Moby? I don't look like Moby. And I began to rant and rave for about a minute to two minutes, and finally the phone went really quiet, and I hear this voice seek out, well, who should I have I told you? Who should I have I told you that he looked like, or you look like? And I said, what do you mean? I look like Bruce Willis. <laughs> and what I want to tell you and show you is that the truth is somewhere in between. And that's just like life. And so life is always something between perception and reality. So today, I'm going to teach you a little bit about reality, and we're going to discover our it factor. Now, what is your it factor? Picasso said it best. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So how do I give it away? Well, I'm going to give you five quick tips on how to discover your it factor. And it's broken down into one word. I call it BRIC, but it's really an acronym for brand, responsibility, uh, influence, character, and knowledge. Now let's start with brand. You guys realize you are a brand, right? Here's how I know you're a brand. Let's take a look at your Instagram account, your Pinterest account, your Facebook, your Snapchat. In over eight years of social media, you guys have branded yourself with your own content and your own ideas, and you guys are shaping your brands. And it's very powerful stuff. Know how, know how powerful it is? Let's put it this way. You're just as powerful as Nike, Red Bull, or Apple. You don't believe me? What if I took your name, TomSullivan.com, and I typed in Nike.com? It would both resonate in the same platform right next to each other. And here's the best part. It only cost you $11 on GoDaddy. So here's what I want you to do today. I want you to go to GoDaddy. I want you to buy your first and last name, .com. And here's why. Because one of you is going to be a U.S. Senator. One of you is going to be a cast member on The Walking Dead, and you know they need them. And another one's going to be a fashionista or a designer, and you know you need your name on the back of the tag on the shirt. So go get your .com name today on GoDaddy. Um, the next thing is responsibility. Now, um, responsibility is, uh, I'm sorry, before I get going, I want to, I want to, I want to come up with some credibility real quick. So you're probably asking yourself, well, hey, what's this guy's brand? What's this guy's it factor? Well, my it factor is my name, Greg Champion. And the reason why I say that is because ever since I've been born with a name, anytime I call somebody, put it down on paper, people are like, what a great name. That, that name must be a tough name to live up to. How, how'd you get a name like that? Hey, would you adopt me? And so I went through life with this name of Greg Champion, but it all started back, back in the third grade. So let's hop in my DeLorean and go back to the third grade. And there I was in the first day of class in the third grade. And the teacher's going through the, role, the roster of students. And next thing you know, I hear Greg Stevenson, Greg Thompson, Greg Zimmerman. There was five Gregs in this class, and they all spelled their name with one G. I went home that night to my mother and I go, Mom, we're changing my name to Tom, Steve, Jeff, because I wanted to be different. I couldn't be included with all other Gregs. And then she said, she kind of did the motherly thing, like, yeah, okay, we'll wait till the morning, you know. But basically, the next, that night, she went upstairs and Monday Night Football came on. And on Monday Night Football, one of the athletes' names was G-R-E-G-G. -G -G. And I yelled, Mom, get down here, get down here. She comes running down as if the house is on fire. And I said, that's what we're doing. She goes, what do you mean? What, what, what are we doing? I said, that's what we're doing. I said, we're going to add an extra G to my name. And she said, go ahead. <laughs> and so from that point in the third grade, I added an extra G. 
I told this story to my first boss out of college, and he simply said, you wanted to act, add an extra G to your, last, to your first name? Your last name is Champion. You're going to stand out. And it's honest to God truth. I was able to build a brand of being able to work with very high-end companies and high-end brands by leveraging my name, Greg Champion, to garner business. But in the end, I didn't find it satisfying. And I'll get to it and why, why I feel satisfied with my new version of, of the Champion name. So the next part is influence. And, or I'm sorry, the next part is responsibility. And here's what I want to talk about responsibility. So part of your